Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 15, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was fairly good. I like the Nia stuff. I did have a few problems, I think, with the writing. But apart from that, I mean, there was some really good stuff. There wasn't much Kara in this episode, maybe that was part of the reason why it wasn't amazing, but it was very good, and I enjoyed it for the most part. So obviously this episode, it was all about the message, and I thought the message was very powerful, I thought Neo was really good in the episode, but like I said, I did have a few problems, and I think that comes from the fact that the writers don't fully understand what was going on, and I appreciate what like Nicole was able to actually add into the episode because I felt there was some like actual authenticity to some of the scenes especially with Nia and her roommate but then at some points I felt like there was this like kind of overarching voice of someone who doesn't fully understand like what they were trying to say and I think that comes down to the main probably two writers I believe in this episode so I think maybe the episode would have been a little bit more impactful and I'm not saying it's not impactful it was very impactful but it, I would have thought it would have been more impactful if say they got Nicole and like an actual trans writer to write the script and maybe it would have been like fully true but you know I thought they did a good job and I thought Nicole was amazing in this episode and I also thought her roommate was absolutely brilliant and they had some really touching moments together and definitely I felt the emotion and obviously this episode we didn't have that much Kara I believe this is one of the episodes that you know is sort of a setup to what's going to be happening as you know I know they are shooting a lot of stuff with Melissa and they did shoot a lot of stuff with her but it seemed like maybe they were cutting it back a bit maybe due to the pregnancy or it could be due to just them wanting to focus more on Nia but we'll have to wait and see as to the true reasoning and if that will continue throughout, you know, the next couple of episodes or so. But anyway, so we start off the episode with Kelly and Kelly is back and she's actually doing something. She hasn't had much to do for about like five episodes or so, you know, kind of forgettable like little segments. Apart from last episode, she had a funny scene with Kara and Alex right at the start, but then she didn't really do anything. And so she's still working at Obsidian, Obsidian's still going on, this was like kind of a big Obsidian episode. A lot of stuff to do with VR, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit fed up of VR because it seems like everything is being excused as VR, like anything cool that they think of is just like, oh it's VR, it's just Obsidian or whatever. And I think it's becoming a sort of excuse to do some stuff rather than doing it in reality. And so VR is like such a massive thing in this world in Supergirl's world and obviously in real life it's not a big thing and they are taking massive liberties with the abilities that it can give people and like what people can do which I don't see as a problem but I think they may be relying on the VR stuff a little bit too much for their own good but anyway so what happens later in the episode Alex goes into this virtual reality world into a place called virtual Las Vegas it's old-fashioned it's got this nice sensibility around it it looked very nice and we have her going into this sort of psycho house on the hill, he sees people drowning, and then at one point when she's trying to get into this virtual reality, you see an option which she's going to pick in a few episodes time when they head back into virtual reality, and you saw an option for Supergirl Alex for a version of herself in that black and blue suit that we've been teased with, obviously we've seen the photos from the set, also Kyla's posted photos, and I believe they posted a new photo the other day which maybe I'll find and put in the video, but basically that's coming next episode, I do believe that is episode 16, and this episode was episode 15, so yeah, definitely going back in there, Supergirl Alex next episode, I can't wait for that, but anyway, so let's move on to the next bit, so we have Kara and Alex towards the start of the episode, they're having fun with Alex's new device, it's very funny, like just a really good sort of Danvers sisters moment, and Basically, this episode is Nia's episode. You have this embarrassing scene, you know, really at the start when Nia's there, she's taken down a Dominator, and then Kara's like floating in the air, and it's some of the worst CGI I've seen on Supergirl. Obviously, I don't really pay too much attention to the CGI, but this was really obviously like them just like putting Melissa there and like moving her around, and it looked like 
it was doing that. So obviously she was comped in after, she was put in after. It didn't look good. It didn't look good, guys. I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm sorry for being a bit negative about some of this stuff, but I don't think this was like a perfect episode. I think some of the recent episodes have been better. I thought this definitely had the emotion. The emotion was a great success in this episode, but just some of those moments just didn't hit. Anyway, so a big part of this episode was Nia and her roommate. So her roommate Yvette returns. She's very funny. I really like her. And, you know, she hasn't been in that much of the season. I think she's been in like four episodes or something like that. So she keeps on like reoccurring like every now and again. And I think she's interesting. And I thought she was definitely really good in this episode because I felt like the way they sort of kicked off Nia's kind of vengeance story was very effective with her believing that, you know, she's going to find this boyfriend, she's going to be happy and stuff, and then obviously she reaches this guy, and this guy is a transphobic piece of shit, basically. And so what happens is very impactful because she is affected by this, and therefore Nia is affected by this after, and then that leads to Nia's sort of anger for this guy and anger for people like this, for basically like pricks who think this way. But additionally, at the same time, you got Kara. Like I said, Kara's not in this episode very much, and I felt like they did cut the date between her and William off like really short. Like it was just a really brief, brief moment, and that's what I'm saying. Like it felt a bit odd how like they just kind of cut her scenes a bit, and maybe there was more. Maybe they film more, or maybe just they couldn't film more with Melissa. I'm not sure. But anyway, so Kara and William go on the date. She is very cute, and she's, like, trying not to destroy and, like, obliterate this pool ball or, like, snooker ball or something like that. And so it was a very kind of cute scene, very funny, and I don't know how I feel about them together, but I liked that scene. I thought it was cute, and I thought it was very enjoyable. And, yeah, I just kind of wish there was a bit more of that, to be honest, in this episode. But anyway, so Nia and her roommate, they go to this bar, they get attacked and they get targeted by this transphobic guy trying to get to Dreamer because he doesn't agree with her being a hero. And at one point, Dreamer actually finds this guy again who attacked and catfished her, you know, roommate, and she basically gives him a huge Batman-type lesson, and she's basically just, like, serving him on a plate. And so it felt very good to see her get that vengeance, but she goes very far and Supergirl flies in and Supergirl has to stop her from killing him and then it kind of weirdly cuts to them at their apartment at like Nia's apartment and she's crying and I thought it was strange but then like looking back at it I was like oh this makes sense because she's had these flashbacks she's seen the blood on like her hands or something like that and it's something that she felt like she wanted to do she wanted this vengeance she wanted this revenge for this guy attacking you know not just her roommate, but basically attacking all trans people. And so he gets what's coming to him, he gets sent to prison by the end of the episode. Obviously he was a villain, but he wasn't like a super power villain, so he was very easy to defeat. And I think, you know, the way that he was defeated was very good, and I thought Nia was very powerful in that moment. So whilst this is going on, we've got Alex, and she's in the VR world, so Alex gets stuck in VR by this Richard guy. And it seems like the VR world is basically infected and being controlled by Leviathan for their own needs. And so by the end of the episode, we get this reveal that this Mr. Bates, obviously a reference to Psycho. And, you know, we had the Psycho house in this episode, so very Psycho-like. We see him with the Leviathan lady, the old lady, and they are testing human subjects, it looks like, for whatever needs they want. And so you got that room full of, like, bodies and stuff and it's kind of creepy and I'm very much looking forward to seeing what happens with all of that and so at the same time just towards the end of the episode we get an amazing reveal that came completely out of nowhere and this is a phone call that comes from Kara's mum and Alex's mum and this phone call is a call to say they found Jeremiah they found your dad and he's dead so that was a holy shit moment, and obviously Jeremiah is not going to return, and they didn't plan to bring him back. That's due to Dean Kane, the actor, you know, not basically suiting the show. I'm not going to go into detail, but I've talked about this in the past as to why. But nevertheless, about that situation, Jeremiah is their dad, and it's very impactful 
because he went missing and obviously we know the reason but like they didn't know the reason in their actual Supergirl world and now they found out he's dead this is going to be a continuation onto next episode and I thought it was a very good sort of end to the episode to cap it off because now I'm intrigued. But anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video, hopefully you enjoyed it, sorry for being a little bit negative about some of the stuff, but overall, I did enjoy this episode and I thought it was quite good, and I'm looking forward to the next episode with Supergirl Alex. Anyway guys, catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.